Hey everybody, it's me, Autumn, with Southern Sky Beauty, and I hope everyone had a really, really great uh, holiday and New Year, and let's just jump right into it. I have a very, very cool four-part tutorial planned for you guys. It's going to be a uh, bath bomb tutorial, I guess, for beginners. Each section is going to be very important topics in regards to bath bombs and this first topic is going to be uh, basically just me talking about bath bomb colorants and uh, their pros, their cons, and I'm going to follow up with like a little demo just so you guys can get a better visual of what I'm talking about. These are just tips and tricks that I have learned along the way. I certainly don't know everything. Um, I'm always evolving, I'm always changing how I do things, I always have something new to learn, but I just want to kind of share with you the experience and the knowledge that I have gained this far to, to help you guys. So I hope this helps. Uh, so let's get right to it. The four main ways to color bath bombs, and they are broken down into dyes, lakes, micas, and liquid colorants. Lakes and dyes are the more popular ways to color bath bombs, um, and they're broken down into F, D, and C uh, colors, and what that means is food, drug, and cosmetic, and bath bombs fall under cosmetics per the FDA, so we have to follow the FDA guidelines for cosmetic colorants. If you're going to plan on eventually selling, or if you do sell, it is highly important that you are purchasing lakes and dyes that are batch certified. Any reputable supplier is going to be forthright with this information. Um, you will be given a batch certification lot number and you can back check this on the FDA website www.fda.gov and there's a tab specifically says colorants on it. You can check all the information on every color that is approved for cosmetic use. There's a tab that says companies requesting batch certification within the last two years and it's broken down by US based companies and non US based companies. So let's start talking about dyes. I really love dyes. I use them for every every project that I make I use dyes. Um, again they're FD and C colors so it's gonna be a color followed by a number like blue one, yellow five, yellow six, red 27, the list goes on and on. Let's talk about the pros. They are super, super concentrated. I'm sure as you see me talking, like I have stains all over, it's fine. Um, but they're super concentrated. A little bit goes a long way and that's because they are so concentrated um, that they're extremely vibrant. You get a great color payoff and you won't need to use polysorbate to disperse your color. If you don't know what polysorbate is, we'll get a little bit into that later, but just know you don't need it to disperse color for dye. Some of the cons are that they're a little bit more pricey up front, but you can, you know, it's it's a balancing act because you won't need much dye, so it's going to last a long time. But um you know, you're paying for your batch certification when you're paying for your dye, so that's kind of why it costs a little bit more. I don't know if that's considered a con, but I think it's more of a must because you need that batch certified number if you're going to sell. Um, they are UV and pH sensitive, so they have a tendency to morph or bleed in certain products. Um, or if they are exposed to sunlight. So that is a big consideration, especially if you're going to be out at vendor events or whatever. Um, so I just want you all to be aware of that. But another thing that a lot of people don't like about dye is that you have to bloom the dye. And what that means is you have to add the dye, because it's in powder form, to your baking soda and spray some sort of binder to get the color to explode or to bloom in your baking soda and normally that's done with witch hazel or or water so you add your dye spritz spritz it down get the color to come out and let it dry and sit so you have like pre-colored baking soda for your bath bombs 
if you don't have the time to wait on waiting for your baking soda to dry, you may not be a fan. Uh, but we will go into some little tricks that I've picked up so you don't have to bloom your baking soda. So anyway, that aside, that's your dyes. Next is lakes. And again, you need your batch certification if you're gonna sell. Still broken down into F, D, and C colors, red 27, blue one, so on and so forth. This also comes in powder form, but it's really easy to work with, not like dye. You can just add it to your baking soda uh, or your bath bomb mix. You don't have to bloom it. However, you do need polysorbate uh, for this product. Cost-wise, not real, I mean, I guess maybe they're a little bit cheaper. I guess it's gonna vary from vendor to vendor. So that's just something you're just gonna have to look into. Um, but, you know, you're gonna have to use a lot more of the lake to get the same color payoff as you would with a dye. Um, there's only a small percentage um, of an actual lake that's dye, and the rest are just like fillers, and those are not water soluble so you're gonna need polysorbate to help kind of get things dispersed so that could be a little bit of a con next we have micas if you don't know what mica is mica is a natural mineral um, that has zinc oxide titanium dioxide iron oxide other things added to it to give it color and that's what's awesome about micas is that there's so many colors to choose from. Um, but just because it has a natural ingredient, I don't think makes it a natural colorant. So that's also something that you may want to research. You're going to want to avoid anything with ultramarine in it or straight ultramarines. Because if you put this in a bath bomb, you are going to get a stink bomb. It smells like sulfur. Um, so that is just a trick for you to keep. Don't use it. So some of the pros to using mica is that they are relatively cheap. There's a ton of colors to choose from. You could get lost in the sea of colors. Um, adding mica to your bath bombs gives the water that really beautiful like shimmery effect. I love using micas as a little additive to give it that little shimmer. Um, and you don't need a batch certification for mica. But some of the cons are is that it's pretty difficult to work with and you really have to test a bath bomb that uses mica as a main colorant because if you don't use polysorbate, you are going to get a nightmare of a mess. And we're gonna get into that in the demo. Lastly, we have liquid colorants. And I'm not too familiar with them, but it's basically dye dispersed in glycerin. And because of this state, you don't need a batch certification, but you're not gonna get the huge color payoff like you would with lakes or dyes. Because these colors are dispersed in glycerin, glycerin has is a humectant, so it has a tendency to draw moisture to itself. So if you're using this in a bath bomb, it's very likely that your bath bombs could prematurely activate and set off because of this use of glycerin. Plenty of people use them, don't have an issue, they probably know the bounds of how much they can and can't use, um, but that is again just a consideration that you will want to think about. Wholesale Supplies Plus sells it and it's called Stained Glass Colorant and Brambleberry has it and it's called um, La Bombe Colorant. Again, I'm not too familiar with it so I would definitely check those places out if this sounds like something you may want to use. So. Without further ado, we're going to go get into the demo and I'm going to show you guys exactly how these work. Okay everyone, so this is going to be the demo portion of our talk about colorants for bath bombs. And um, basically we have our dye. Uh, I keep my dye dispersed in a mixture of alcohol and water. Um, so that's why this guy is here. We have our Red 27 Lake and mica and so what we're going to do is going to go through each one and kind of show you how they uh, behave in water um, and just kind of let you see 
what they do and the differences between them so you can choose what would best suit your needs. So, so here we have our dye. We're going to be using blue number one today. So as we, as we spoke before about the pros and cons, um, I'm going to show you like how concentrated these actually are. And if you've watched my, uh, some of my other videos, um, you know how concentrated dyes are, but again, for the sake of this video, we're going to do it again. So that's straight dye. Wear gloves because you will stain your skin. And I'll get just a little smidge. You guys are going to be amazed. Like this little tiny bit. This is a quarter teaspoon just for size reference, but... that before it spills everywhere. There's kind of a little bit of chunky stuff floating on the top, but it needs a second to kind of disperse. But there you go. Completely dispersed. And that's why I love dyes. The color payoff is so incredible. I mean, you have to pay more up front like we spoke about, but to me, it's totally worth it. So next, we're gonna talk about lakes. All right, we've got our Red 27 Lake ready, and um, I, I really enjoy lakes too. I think for me, it depends on the project that I'm using it for. I do use lakes a lot um, when I'm using bath bombs, because as we spoke about, you can just add it to your dry ingredients, and there's no need to bloom your baking soda like you would with dyes, so you can just throw some in your batch and go. Um, and it does tell you, again, these are batch certified. Um, this happens to be from Nurture Soap. And it tells you this 18% dye. So you are going to get um, a really good color payoff with lakes, but the remainder of this number um, contains uh, fillers basically, which are not water soluble, so it's pretty Pretty good idea if you're going to use lakes to just go ahead and use polysorbate anyway. And um, if you don't know what polysorbate is, um, you're going to have to stick around for my next video because we're going to be talking about um, common bath bomb ingredients and their uses, and polysorbate happens to be one of them. But anyway, so here we go. I'm going to take a little scoop, that much, and I'll add it to this water. So you see how it's kind of chunky and falling down to the bottom? It's pretty cool looking. But we'll go ahead and give it a little stir because you guys can kind of see how it's not exactly absorbing or um, dissolving as well as the dye did. It's kind of just sitting on the top of the water and then just falling. So this is, it's got some of that dye content and that's what's giving the color, but then you have the rest that's remaining on top. And then that's why it's beneficial to use the polysorbate because if this were a whole bath of water and you were to pull the plug, this stuff floating on the top would remain on the sides of your bathtub. Okay, so for micas, we have a pretty green mica here. I wanted to get something pretty dark so you guys be able to see it, but from Brambleberry, I have water here and I'm going to show you guys how mica behaves in water, but then I also have some mica with a little bit of oil here and I'm going to add some polysorbate to this and show you guys how polysorbate works. So let's get a little bit of this green mica in the water and you'll probably get some dispersion. But as you let it sit, you're going to start noticing like a slick like an oil slick on top of this mica. And actually this one's not dispersing at all, so this is actually a really good example. So if this were in a bath bomb, you guys, this would all be stuck to the edge of the bathtub. Look, it's like forming a skin. Can you see that?
Like if I'm dipping it in water, it should be clean under there, right? See it? But as I pull it out, it's completely stuck to the spoon. And no matter how much mixing you use or do, you will never get this mica to incorporate into this water. See? Nasty. You don't you don't want that in a bath bomb. That will be all over you. All over your customers, all over their tub and you'd get a lot of complaints. So, with that being said, I'm gonna add a little bit of water and polysorbate to this oil mica mixture, and I'm gonna really incorporate, I'll show you guys, this mica into this oil. And the polysorbate is an emulsifier, so it's going to allow water and oils to mix. So a secondary like benefit to using polysorbate in mica is that the mica binds with the oil and the oil binds with the poly and thus you get dispersion of the mica in the water. So let's see if I can make a mess here. Ugh. Okay, so you see how the oil and water are separating, right? So I have a little pipette over here of polysorbate. Let's let it come down to the end here. Typical um, usage rate for polysorbate is half the amount of oils, but again, we will get into that in the next video. So here's my poly. And look, you see that big clump falling? Let's mix it up so I can show you guys. And the fizzing action of the bath bomb is going to help get this dispersed too um, with your poly and oils. So you may still see a little bit of um, remainder of oils on the top. But anytime you're going to use ingredients that you're not quite familiar with, you're going to want to test them anyway and make sure that you're really putting out a good quality product for your customers. So anyway, you can see that this is already a hundred times better with the addition of the polysorbate. So there you go. You guys get the general idea. So that's how it behaves in water, each different colorant. And I'm making a mess over here. But um, yeah, so there again, dye micas and I tossed my cup with my lakes in it but anyway I hope this was somewhat beneficial to you guys um, again go back over listen to the pros and cons of of each product and kind of choose what you think will work the best for you and then next time we come back we're gonna talk about um, bath bomb ingredients and what they're used for so you can kind of start trying to figure out how to formulate your own Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching, and again, stick around for my uh, part two video um, on bath bomb ingredients. Thanks. Bye.